now to trans rights. There have been many anti-LGBTQ plus bills introduced and enacted, outlawing things like gender affirming health care and banning kids from playing sports. To go deeper into this issue, here with us today is Dylan Mulvaney, who's welcomed us into her life by, you know, showing on social media her girlhood series. Let's take a look. My name is Dylan Mulvaney. I am a trans woman and I am documenting my transition publicly on TikTok for the world to see. When people started watching and the numbers kept getting higher, I realized quickly how public my transition would be. Of course, I knew that there would be backlash and negativity. I try to not let the internet's words hurt me or my spirit. But do you know what does hurt? Seeing people in power and authority figures creating laws and bills that are actively trying to harm us trans humans, especially trans children. Our lives have become political talking points. Lawmakers in many states want to exclude us from participating in sports or getting proper health care. Some folks want to decide where we can use the bathroom. No one should have fear living in a state that they call home while being true to themselves. No one should have their lives put in danger because of who they are inside. That's why I'm sharing my story with the world. I'm using my platform to stand up for my community and for any of the little Dillons that deserve a clear path to their true identity. Uh, Mr. President, this is my 221st day of publicly transitioning. God and, love you. Uh, thank you. I am extremely privileged to live in a state that allows me access to the resources I need, and that decision is just between me and my doctors. But many states have lawmakers that feel like they can involve themselves in this very personal process. Do you think states should have a right to ban gender-affirming health care? I don't think any state or anybody should have the right to do that as a moral question and as a legal question. I just think it's wrong. You know, I think I was saying before we started that my son, my deceased son, used to be the Attorney General of the State of Delaware. He passed the most, the broadest piece of legislation that he, as Attorney General, can, uh, was able to convince the legislature and the governor to sign that dealt with uh, all gender-affirming capability. I mean, there's a lot of you know, you sometimes they try to block you from being able to access certain medicines, being able to access certain procedures and so on. None of that should be available. I mean, uh, you know, no, no state should be able to do that, in my view. So I feel very, very strongly that uh, that you should have every single solitary right, including including use of the, your gender identity bathrooms in public. Thank you. Thank you. And it, it feels like Republicans have turned trans and non-binary people into this thing to blame society's downfall on in some ways. And this narrative is not only dangerous to our mental health, but also our physical safety. And particularly trans women of color are being murdered at an alarming rate. More than any other group of people. Thank you. How can Democratic leaders be more effective in advocating for us trans people and our families and our lives and our opportunities? I'm not being facetious when I say this, being seen with people like you. No, I mean it. I genuinely mean it. People fear what they don't know. They fear what they don't know. And when people realize, individuals realize, oh, this is what they're telling me to be frightened of? This is the problem? This is, I mean, people change their minds. People are just don't know enough to know. And it's not because of intellectual incapability is just lack of exposure and uh, and I think that uh, it's really important that we continue to speak out about the basic fundamental rights of all human beings and the idea the idea that what's going on you know in some states I won't get into the politics of it but in some states it's just it's outrageous and I think it's immoral the trans parts not immoral what they're trying to do to trans persons is immoral. Thank you. And do you have any messages to the families of trans folks that are seeking, you know, uh, options for their children, uh, but are struggling to find resources? Do you have a message to those parents? Yeah, I do. Um, this is blood of your blood, bone of your bone. And uh, um, it is... Uh, Again, speaking to my son, when he was, he was spent a year in Iraq and he, 
was a decorated soldier. He volunteered to go. As a, he had to give up the attorney general's job and then came back to it. And uh, he started a, a, a foundation I'm not allowed to talk about now because I can't raise money for it any longer. But it was for abused children. And one of the things he did is raise millions of dollars, this organization, to basically educate parents as to what they should not be afraid of um, and to educate the community as to what is, what, what is just pure hyperbole. And, and uh, so I just think it's a matter of leaders speaking out and... Uh, and saying, as I told you, I mentioned a young woman who used to be in his staff, used to be in my staff, um, who is now a state senator. Uh, a number, and she's trans, and she's a, a, you know, a state senator in the state of Delaware, in an area that was historically very conservative, the part of Delaware. And she, uh, she's running unopposed this time. Um, so things are changing. Things are changing. But it's a matter of us acknowledging that there's nothing to be, just because it's different, there's nothing to be fearful about. Thank you for your questions, Dylan, and for using your platform to empower others. Mr. President.